Mesdames, Messieurs, bonjour. Je m'appelle Harald Yang et c'est pour moi un honneur de parler ici devant vous. Je suis originaire de Vienne en Autriche, photographe et auteur spécialiste de l'architecture et depuis 20 ans, je visite les villes françaises qui, grâce à des tramways modernes, se sont offerts de nouveaux espaces de vie. J'ai écrit un livre inspiré par l'exemple de ces villes françaises pour montrer aux habitants de Vienne quel visage pouvait prendre l'urbanisme. Ce livre s'appelle « L'avenir des villes ». I'm very sorry I have to change to English now because my French is not good enough, but I hope that you will enjoy my little slideshow anyway. I was invited here to provide a view from the outside on the culture of French tramways. Of course it can be strange that it's an Austrian who is telling French experts about the French tramways, but the comparison might be interesting in some cases. I don't have to say much about the history of French local transport. There were, apart from three metro networks and three obsolete tram lines, exclusively buses. In the German-speaking countries, or also in Belgium, for example, it was different. Here, there is a tradition of rail transport and in many cities an uninterrupted history of operation. I would like to start with Vienna as a contrast to France. Vienna is known as a city of art and culture, but this concerns mainly music and theatre, not urbanism. Our city planners love a kind of joke. They say, Vienna is late at the right moment. So some things like big demolitions, urban motorways or tram abandonments did happen, but in an excessive scale. Vienna has always dreamed of being car-friendly and neglected the tramway, one of the largest networks in the world. There was also a Stadtbahn, which was operated by strange two-axle tram cars. In the 1960s they tried a pre-metro system, but that was not very successful. Public transport had a bad reputation, car traffic was massive. Then. They started from scratch and planned a very good new metro system. Here, the effect was similar to that in France. The completely outdated public transport system was reinvented with a lot of prestige. The new metro was extremely fast and around 1980 a basic network was completely opened within three years. And as in France with the tramway, Vienna worked in a similar way. The city center, previously at night a dead office area, was revitalized with pedestrian zones and public spaces and car traffic was displaced. So it was very similar to France. The complete redesign of traffic calmed streets was part of the great success. By the way, this was also financed with a metro tax very similar to the Versement de Transport in France. The big problem with the metro is just this. Politicians love this elegant toy, but the tramway has never managed to catch up and is obsolete to this day. Whenever a new line really comes to life, it is perceived more as a disruption, not as an upgrade. But there are effects that have become really visible in recent decades. High performance connections strengthen existing centers and suck people out of the weaker subcentres. Today, the city does not think about urbanism when they build new metro lines and many of the positive effects of the early days disappear. The metro no longer creates nice places to stay, but pumps people from ugly suburbs into existing urban centers. When I saw the French trams for the first time, it was 20 years ago in Strasbourg, I realized that there are cities that have understood this problem. With the tram, which travels through the city at a harmonious speed and brings beauty everywhere, the whole city becomes more vital. And this brings me to a core sentence that is very important to me. Do you invest money 
for getting away as fast as possible? Or do you invest for the quality of staying there? Here in Orléans you can see the very great strength of the French tramway. High quality, great design even in outer districts. Level zero is the one relevant to life. All the others are for infra infrastructure like water and gas pipes. But there is only one level zero. It's for the people, so it must get the highest attention. I would like to limit myself to a small selection of the 30 or so tram cities in France. Of course, you know all the places and maybe they are nothing special for you, but they are actually unique in the whole of Europe. Nantes was the start. Meanwhile, the system is perceived as not so fancy, but solid. In fact, it's more than that. The setting along the river Erdre is fantastic and the new extensions are some of the best I've seen. The famous saying, the tramway has brought us a park, is a reality in Nantes. And the renewal of the tramway is still going on most recently along Line 1, which now have been revamped after about 30 years, bringing again new improvements to the public space. I know that people in France are now trying to work cheaper and they have succeeded. Le Mans or Besançon are examples I would like to mention here. However, who buys cheap buys sometimes expensive. Think of the problems in Besançon with the vehicles that were too short. Nevertheless, in Besançon, the main areas of the city center and the quay have been beautifully redesigned. The integration into the historic old town in the river loop was elaborate and I find the simple but solid design interesting with affectionate details. As an interior designer, I used to remodel pubs and restaurants. There is a lot of technology like electrics, ventilation, restrooms, kitchen, heating and so on. And it always turned out that in the end you can only see 10% of the total investment. And only a part of that 10% was the design and the finish. But I always had to fight for that the most because after a long construction period there was no energy left and no money. However, the guests don't come because the heating is so good. They come because the place looks cool and of course for the cold beer. In the case of the tram, for instance here in Bordeaux, this means that the expensive track construction or the electricity supply <coughs> is a matter of course anyway. But people are attracted by the feeling and are drawn to the beautiful new design. The costs that determine the ambience are small in relation to the basic investment that is necessary anyway. City centers have always been a territory of high quality. The city squares have always been jewelry boxes in which works of art were collected and displayed. Walter Benjamin said that to live is to leave traces. In the permanent city, inhabitants leave their traces according to the spirit of the times. Today we admire elegant monuments or suffer from the injury of brutal traffic structures of the 1960s. We can read the city like a book. The urban structure with its streets is the grammar that hardly changes. The houses are the words subject to fashion, and the design of the street is the dialect. When the city was rebuilt for the car, the dialect became rough and vulgar. With reurbanization, with the construction of new trams, the language of the city became cultivated and elegant again. A grandiose example of this is the T3 line in Paris, which of course you know well and which I don't need to describe further. The comprehensive redesign of the entire Boulevard des Maréchères is splendid proof that you can reclaim even massive traffic access for people. At great expense, of course, but I don't think you can afford less. City is identity. 
For me as a photographer, designer, author and flaneur, the holistic reinterpretation of the streets is an experience of the highest quality. I come from a city that usually tries to cram maximum transport capacity into a street. The car, bicycle and public transport lobbies fight for space, for lanes. The space is dedicated to getting around quickly, not to staying there. There is nothing left for beauty and certainly nothing for art. The result are dissatisfied people who lose interest for where they live and who prefer to flee the city by car. But cities are not places of transit, they are places of residence. The tram, which runs at a suitable speed directly in the street, is the perfect answer to this need. The French school of tramway is the opposite of this technocratic approach, a means of transport that brings art and beauty back into the city. It is paradoxical, a means of transport that invites you to stay, the trains and the track itself ornaments for the city. Hundred years ago, the best architects of their time built the transport structures. Otto Wagner in Vienna, Hector Gumar in Paris. It is so logical that today the best architects and designers are planning the urban conversions. For me, artworks along the route are a perfect complement, as important as the means of transport itself. Today, the Champagne trams are attractions of France. The tramway yachts of Marseille became symbols of the port city. The best current example is Tours, with the concept of the fourth landscape. The tramway as an integral element of the city, alongside the river, the gardens, the buildings. An incredible urban experience for me. Our global world is standardizing many things. And now that even modern buildings are becoming more and more similar, people need elements that make their city unique. Means of transport with their long lifespan are well suited for this demarcation. Think of the red double-decker buses in London, the so-called bull's eye of the underground, or the network maps of Harry Beck. For me, the melodic sound of closing doors in the metro is a symbol of having arrived in Paris. In the standardization of the product world, it is necessary to maintain such differences. People are emotional beings. The familiarity of structures conveys security and a sense of home. Your new transport networks offer just that. From the white swallows on the trains in Montpellier to the sunk station announcements in Strasbourg from the champagne flutes in Reims to the friendly silkworms of Lyon. All of this means identification and represents home in a world where borders are dissolving. But with all the light, there are also some shadows that have nothing to do with good design. I think the complete reinvention of the tram lacks the pragmatic tradition of old operators like in Vienna. So for me, there are two serious, very irritating things in France. On the one hand, it concerns the infrastructure. Thinking in terms of individual lines, like here in Montpellier, instead of complete networks, in Paris even with incompatible infrastructure, devalues a lot and makes operation expensive. I know that the tram in Paris was intended as feeder lines for the Metro and RR, but maybe the next decades bring hope. In Vienna, there were always special events like soccer matches, concerts, All Saints Day, where trolleys from all over the city were used for reinforcement. Also, diversions are not a big problem in a real dense network. For instance, here in red, all the possible reroutings for our Line 1. On the Ringstraße, there is currently a replacement line for the closed U2 metro in addition to the normal lines. The other weak point, from my point of view, is the handling of disruptions. In Vienna, trams are rolling as long as they can, and they can for a very long time. 
There are special vehicles and they can of course run throughout the whole network. We have for example these all-purpose cars. They are workhorses and when there is snow or ice they run through the network according to a plan that has nothing to do with the normal routes. There are also switches or routes that are not used by lines but are often practical as bypasses. I think for the customer the normal operation routine is obvious. The real strength and quality of a network operator shows itself when it comes to exceptional conditions. All this is not easy by thinking in terms of isolated lines. In Paris this topic is unfortunately lost, but maybe the future will bring new opportunities. But let's come back to the bright sides, and they are shining really bright. The French cities have rediscovered their true purpose in recent decades, and French urban redevelopments with their composed symphony of form, light and sound inspire artists to engage. In Nice, exciting works of art accompany the road of the tramway. For me, the colorful statues on Place Massena symbolize the rediscovered city best. They are figures at the same eye level in communication with each other. Each figure is unique, yet none stands above the other. I see them as symbols of today's citizens of Nice, who have responsibly repossessed the most beautiful town square on the Côte d'Azur. For me, this is the real success of the new charms of France, to have rediscovered the city in its diversity, its poetry, its beauty. It is perhaps tempting to save all of that, and of course it is not absolutely necessary. But it is these things, the beauty, the atmosphere, that makes the French tramway what it is and excites people. I think some engineers maybe underestimate the importance of these things, but that's exactly why French tramways are icons of the 21st century.